Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So we're going to do something a little bit risky, a little bit crazy, but a whole lot of fun today. And we're going to start out by using one of these Rolio fluorescent mica powders that I got in the other day that Rolio was kind enough to send me. And I'm going to go with kind of like this orangey kind of reddish pinkish color they don't have names like actual color names they just have numbers and this is number 8812 and we're just gonna put this in some resin and basically what I want to do is I'm gonna make this tray all one color and I just kind of want to go with this kind of fluorescent -y color because what we're gonna be doing today is a little crazy so I feel like these fluorescent colors and just the bright vividness of them is perfect for this. Now, I am going to put a lot in here and we're going to mix it up really, really well. And today I am using my Nick Pro Crystal Clear Finish Resin. And what I noticed at first, and I've noticed this in a lot of your glow powders and other fluorescents that I've used, is that they're a little chunky and kind of hard to dissolve. And that was kind of the case for some pe some bits in this one as well. I am going to show you here. I've got to mix up some more resin because I didn't make enough. I'm going to show you how you can kind of avoid that. But first, I didn't get the color quite as opaque as I wanted it and just kind of as dark. Like it's still pretty, tr pretty translucent. Now, I don't know because I've not used these before if you're going to get an actual opaqueness from it. Or if they are all going to be translucent, kind of like alcohol inks, and you can just saturate the pigment and get it like a brighter color more. I will have to play around with that a little bit more to find out. But I'm happy with the color that I got. So now I am just pouring it around the edges of this tray. We're going to start here. And obviously we're going to mix up some more resin because I didn't make anywhere near enough. But first what I want to do after I kind of scrape out my cup and get all of this resin in here is I'm going to go around all those 90 degree edges with my silicone tool and I'm going around the outer edge and the inner edge and the reason I'm doing this is because bubbles love to love to love to get trapped there uh apparently first I'm gonna hit it with my heat gun but we'll pretend like I did this in the correct order there we go now I'm using my silicone tool but they do, they love to get trapped in those, in those like little corners and edges and all that stuff. So I am making sure that I go around there really, really well. We're going to set this off to the side. I'm going to mix up some more resin. All right. So I just used the same cup. I haven't colored it at all. But what I want to show you is if you have a mica powder that doesn't quite dissolve very easily in resin, what you can do is you can take your powder and you can put it in a little cup and then you can saturate it with alcohol, right? Kind of like we would if we're doing the alcohol mica painting trick but we want this more of like a paste like consistency and you need to work fast because that alcohol will kind of evaporate and you don't want it to turn back into a powder so at this point you want to make sure that you get it in your resin and treat it like a pigment paste at this point it's not but treat it like it is so you want to make sure that you're mixing up very well and so that you don't have any clumps of that mica powder like kind of pasty concoction just setting around in your resin right because that's not what we need so you do want to mix it up well you do want to work kind of fast with getting that into your resin don't like make it ahead of time and let it sit out because it's not gonna it's not gonna work but it does get rid of all of those kind of clumpy bits that just some mica powders seem to have and we can eliminate that issue so once i'm done mixing this really 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 well i'm then going to just continue filling up my tray now this didn't completely completely fill it up and I'm okay with that because at this point I can see I can see the mold so I know that this is going to be transparent and I'm kind of playing around with a backing color if I want to continue with a, a different color on the back that's going to be opaque so that it's not going to be a see-through tray. But I haven't decided at this point, so I'm just going to go with it. Let this cure. Now, I have noticed that the sides of my tray, as you can see, they're kind of bowing out a little bit, and that's easily rectified. Just get some silicone or something something hard or, you know, whatever that you can set up against the edge of it just to hold its shape. 
All right, so 24 hours later, here we are. It's time to demold. And it has cured beautifully. I didn't have any issues with the wonky edges from my tray or my mold bowing out, which is great. And we're just going to take this out of here. All right, so this is a very, 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 very bright, vivid orange. It's kind of hard. It looks a little muted on my camera, but it is very, very bright, which is perfect for what I have in mind. So I haven't done this in a while and I want to, we are going to do this. One of my members had sent me, it's actually, I think a sticker, but I love the picture and it kind of bodes well with my channel. I feel, and just me with the, it's fine. I'm fine. Everything is fine. So we're going to go with it and I love it. So all I'm doing now, for those of you who are new and haven't seen maybe some of my other videos, is I am taking some carbon paper, putting it down on my tray, figuring out how I want the picture kind of position, and then I'm taping it down so it doesn't move. And then with the carbon paper, they gave, they're almost like little dotting tools that you can kind of do your tracing over with, and it's going to transfer that carbon onto your piece. And it does it quite beautifully. I like it because I can't draw. So this is kind of like the next best thing for me. And we're just going to kind of go with it. So as I go through this process and go through the painting process, I'm going to put you guys. No, I'm not putting you anywhere. I'm going to go on mute. <laughs> I'm going to give you some music to listen to because you don't need me to talk through it. I've got plenty of videos on here that you guys can check out if you haven't seen me do this before, or you can just watch me do it here and you'll know what I'm doing. Anyway, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna jump off, I'm gonna put on some music, and I will catch you guys on the flip side for the next step. And after this, this is where it's gonna get a little crazy.
cute. I love it. I do. I love the franticness look that he's got. And this orange, to me, it's like just all of the frantic type things. Like, I, I just feel this, this is me in a nutshell. Like, just, it's crazy. I love it. Now, if you're looking at the letters and you're like, oh my god, that's terrible. Two things. One, I suck at letters. Like, I guess I can't hold the brush, like, easy enough. It's funny because, like, writing, I can write beautifully, but to actually, like, paint letters like this, I can't do it. But I could have very easily gone on my Cricut if I wanted it perfect, but I, I feel that the kind of messiness, uh, just franticness of the letters that I did, not necessarily on purpose, but that's how it turned out, like, it fits with this. It fits. It's, it's not perfect because there's nothing about this that's going to be perfect. So it just works really well. And I think it's just really, really great. I really do. All right. So I did decide after painting it that I want to go ahead and I'm going to do a backing on here and I'm going to go black. Now, truth be told, I'm a little worried that it's going to mute the color more than I want it to but I feel like white is not what I want to do I want to go black the paint you can kind of sort of see through it in the light too in some areas so I feel like black is the best because then it's going to kind of hide any areas that maybe the paint coverage didn't go on quite as dark as I would have liked it to now I am doing painters tape and I'm taping around the edges this is super risky to do guys like you don't even know because it, it is highly, highly, highly likely that if it spills over, it's going to go underneath that tape and it can completely ruin my entire piece. So, if you're going to do something like this, you need to be very, very, very careful. I recommend using Elmer's glue or liquid latex or something like that. I am making sure that it is completely, completely level because I don't want this to spill over at all. Now, I do have the luxury of the kind of it where the resin kind of pulled in and shrunk up a little bit because I didn't have it filled all the way to the top of the mold. So I do have that little lip along the out, outer edge of it, which is going to help keep this resin in. Now, we all know that resin only goes where it's ever been, but you also know if you've ever done a top coat that it, something can happen and that surface tension can be broken and it can kind of slip over so that is a real worry here because it really could destroy this entire piece if it sinks down through that tape and you know just yeah time was an issue so I thought this was the best way to go and I really just was impatient and didn't want to wait for the paint or the glue to dry covering it the way I should have now all I did was I took a little bit just a little bit of that deep black Rolio pigment paste and I put it in here. I'm going to very carefully kind of smooth it all around to those edges. Before I go like right up to the edge edge of this, I am going to hit it with my heat gun just to make sure that I pop any bubbles from me mixing like the crazy person that I am. And we're, we're going to go with it, right? But I am being like really, really careful here. Again, I, I recommend don't do it like this. I recommend to take the time to use glue or the liquid latex so that you don't have an issue if it does spill over. There have been plenty of pieces that I've ruined thinking that, oh, it'll be fine. I'm not going to do the edge or I'm not going to do this. And it wasn't fine and the piece got ruined or you know, a whole lot of sanding has to happen and then nobody, nobody wants to do all that. All right. So now that I've hit it with my heat gun, I am very, very carefully and very slowly coaxing it up to that edge of the orange. Just, just, just to barely like, just a light, light kiss on, on the side of the orange on that edge so that it doesn't go over and I don't have any issues and I don't have to cry later on about this not working, but I am going super, super slow because I don't want it to get me messed up at, like at all. And I, I just, I can't stress that enough. Like I don't want this to be messed up, but 
but I am taking my time and we're, we're just going to kind of go with it. And I did make sure that, you know, if you put too much on here, you can put so much on that it's going to overflow. Do not spray it with alcohol. At this point, you do not, when you are doing a top coat, you do not want to spray it with alcohol because it will break that surface tension and it's all over from there. Also, I've noticed that sometimes that when you spray with alcohol in the front part, you can get like this weird looking, almost like an oil slick, almost like if it's that Armani blush type stuff, but it's not from the alcohol. So just, yeah, I, that's why I tend to use my heat gun. All right, so 24 hours later, thank you, God, I didn't have any issues. Cured beautifully. I didn't have anything leak over any of the sides or anything. It's just perfect. So I'm super happy about that. But I like it. We are not done yet. So there's some more that I want to do with this. And I think that it's got a lot, a lot, a lot of potential. Like, a lot of potential. But going along with that kind of crazy kind of theme, I decided that I'm gonna risk it again and I, I wanna add like paint splotches to it, but not with paint, with UV resin. So here's the risk. I'm using pigment paste. And this is like, I don't, I've never seen anybody use pigment paste with UV resin before because it is super risky because pigment pastes are so incredibly saturated with color and pigmented that a little bit goes a long way in normal resin, right? And we got to make sure that we get that light to go through to be able to cure it. So I don't know if this is going to work, but I need it to. I want it to because paint's not going to work for what I have in mind on this. And micas aren't going to work either. And the reason they're not going to work is because I don't want it to have that pearlescent look to it that micas carry. So it kind of has to be pigment paste. Nothing. I, I need it to look opaque. I need it to look like paint. So I am making it like it is slightly like just, just barely see through. And of course me being me, instead of putting it on the post, cause this is going to need a top coat, like down where I painted, I, I need to put more resin to protect that paint from getting scratched off or whatever. So instead of putting it down on the bottom first, I just took the chance and I put it up here on the side. Now, I'm doing this on purpose. This isn't going to get top coated like up this high. Obviously, it's a tray and I need it to stay a tray. But I want to make it look almost like it's like a, a painter's palette or just some crazy, crazy mess that occurs in a craft room. Like, I don't know about you guys, but my craft area is like a disastrous nightmare. Like, it doesn't matter. So that's kind of like what the illusion that I want to give that this is just some crazy messy crafter type deal and paint splotches everywhere that being said i'm not necessarily happy with the white because it is so very transparent right now I, it doesn't look like paint like it's not giving me that effect that i want so we're going to think about that one for a minute but we're going to go in here and we're going to do these other colors that i've got and just kind of hope for the best and pray that it works out so I'm going in with the green now. Now when I'm putting this in here, I'm scraping off as much of the pigment paste as I can, right? Because I don't want to waste it. And I'm barely just touching the resin and just putting the tiniest bit in here because I don't want it opaque. Like I, I want it opaque, but I don't want it opaque. Obviously I can't have it opaque because the light won't penetrate through, but I want it to look opaque, if that makes sense. So I don't want it super translucent like that white turned out to be. Now, the green, I added too much pigment paste to it. So when I put it under my little UV flashlight, it like the light was starting to kind of make this, but it's still super wet. So I know that it's too, too opaque, right? So I'm going to add a little bit more. And instead of mixing it in all of it, I'm just going to kind of touch part of it and get it mixed in there so it's not quite as opaque. And then we're just going to kind of splotch it around. Now, I'm not doing this in super thick layers. Like, it may look like it is, but it's really, truly not. I, I'm kind of doing it thin, but because I have it so kind of opaque looking, it's 
the light's still going through it, but it, it's giving the illusion of paint, paint splatters that I want it to have. And I am testing it every, you know, few seconds that I put it under there just to make sure that it's cured enough that it's not going to move. I'm going to put it under my big UV light here in a little bit, but I just want right now, I just want it enough that I don't have to worry about it moving and I want it to, you know, be how I'm putting it. So I want it dripping down the tray. I want it, you know, going off the edges. I want it to look crazy. Like, you're asking yourself, what the hell happened here type, you know what I mean? That's what I want. So we're going to go through this with all of the colors. Now, I, I do recommend that if you are going to try something like this with UV resin and pigment paste, be careful. Make sure that your light is a high powered light because if I tried to use one of those tiny little baby lights, I, I don't think it would have cured at all for me. Like not the way that you need it to. The stuff that's down on the bottom, I'm not super over crazy concerned about because that is going to be covered up with normal resin anyway. So if it doesn't cure, it's, I don't want to say it's whatever, but it's kind of whatever. Like it, it doesn't matter. There's going to be a coating of UV of normal resin over top of it. I don't have to kind of worry about anything happening, but all of these splashes and splodges and dots and drips and everything that I'm putting up top, I have to make sure that those are going to get cured because you can cure or think something's cured, right? And then go back later on and realize that underneath didn't get cured. It's just kind of like the top almost shell of it kind of does, but underneath is all liquidy. So I am making sure that where it's maybe a little bit more saturated, like that big blob of green that's over there, it, it's going to get covered with resin. So if that doesn't get cured completely, completely, it'll be okay. All right. Back to what I'm doing. And I'm just kind of haphazardly, like I want it to look like paint like blobs but then kind of like splashes and I I want it to go over the colors like I don't want to say that there's no thought behind it because I'm putting the thought behind it that I want it to make it look random and make it look like a mess but at the same time not necessarily like as far as where I'm putting each particular color I want it to go over the other colors I want it to just be you know and I do want to make sure that it's on the top and you know I, I've not really seen this done before where somebody is purposely putting something to make it uneven like these are, but th that's kind of the effect that I want. Like, I don't want it to just be on the bottom part of the tray. I want it to, like, actually be, like, that 3D looking like a piece of art in a tray and, you know, having the drips look down so that it, it's like, wow, you know, when you're looking at it, it's like, okay... I get it, you know, and it's not just a tray and the background is like this. It's like all over it. So it's just, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to, it, like, if you get it, you get it. If you don't, I don't know how to explain it anymore. I really don't. So at this point, I've kind of got some of all of my colors on there, but there's certain areas that I'm not really happy about. I feel like it just needs a little bit more. I haven't been happy with that white, so I'm going to take a little bit more UV resin and I'm just going to go over the white again so that it looks like it's more saturated and more opaque and more white looking and add a few more splashes here and there because I feel like I just need a little bit more white. And then we're just going to go in with the other colors again and just kind of splodge them on here and there, put a little bit more up on the top of the tray where like it, it actually comes up just to make sure that it all looks like it's supposed to be. Now I am avoiding the cat and the words. I'm not putting anything over that at all because that's not where I want it. I don't want to cover that up. I just want to kind of add to all of it, right? And then we're going to let this cure for at least a good 10, 15 minutes just to make sure because of how opaque that is that everything is all nice and cured. 
All right, now it's time for this top coat. So I just mixed up about 60 mils of the Nick Pro resin and I'm just putting it in here and we're going to heat it up with our heat gun, pop the bubbles, thin out the resin so that I can just make it move a little bit more easily. Now, the one thing that I do need to pay attention to is that because of the blobs and the splashes and all that, now where it's dripping down the inside of the tray, I'm not necessarily worried about that. I'm not going to cover that, but the part that's on the bottom, I do want to make sure it's completely covered because I do want a flat surface. So I do need to make sure that the amount that I picked, which would be normally enough, you know, just to cover the bottom of the tray is going to be enough to cover any of those areas where it goes a little bit higher up. And I did get lucky because I didn't think about that at first that I was going to have to cover those up. But it just so happened that it was the perfect amount, so yay me for that. Edge to edge, corner to corner, all that good stuff. Let's hit it with a heat gun again. And yeah, we're just going to let this cure and hope for the best that I don't have any issues. And that's it. Like, that's it on this one. I had so, so much fun doing this. Like, it turned out great. I fell in love with this picture as soon as my channel member sent it to me. I was like, oh my god, I have to do this. I I want to do something similar, but I'm going to change it up a bit sometime in the future. But yeah, I this was a blast. I love how this came together. I think it's super, super, super cute. And here we are 24 later, 24 hours later. Everything is cured. Everything's awesome. I love it. I hope you guys love it too. All right, that's a wrap on this one, guys. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff, and I will catch you guys on Thursday in the next one. Love ya. Bye.